Uh, thanks, Alice. That was great. And thanks for coming back from lunch. Uh, so let's get into it. I know we're running late. Um, so what I want everyone to do is just very briefly introduce yourself again. Uh, tell people where you are from and give us just one or two minutes pitch about your company, what it does, when it got started. We'll start with you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Gabriel. I'm from Argentina. Uh, so why I'm here, uh, it used to be that Pavel uh, also lives in Argentina for a while because his son is, is living there, so I met him in lunch and we start conversation, and he told me about Bulgaria and everything, the ecosystem here. So we start talking about how to grow our company. Basically, our company is called Properati, which is a real estate marketplace. We are based in Argentina, but we are office in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico. So we want to change a little bit the way that we rent, buy property across all these markets. Uh, and also, we have a, an office here in Bulgaria for mobile development. So basically, that's what we do. Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Peter. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, I'm CFO at Doc Planner. We are a uh, healthcare marketplace, so matching patients with doctors. The model is pretty simple. It's basically a listing of all the doctors in a given market. Um, we're encouraging users to provide opinions, patient opinions, about those doctors. Um, so think uh, TripAdvisor. And then the second arm is we're actually monetizing is from the doctors we're collecting, um, we're calculating a monthly fee to um, allow them to post their calendar online um, and receive sort of new patients um, and additional revenue. So the model's working well in Eastern European markets. We, we're, we're monetizing um, five markets um, in, in the CE mainly. Um, we've got websites in 20 other markets where we're testing those markets and are at a very early stage. Um, we've actually raised a Series B round recently for uh, 10 million bucks. A um, couple um, investors are uh, in the audience with us today, so thanks guys. Um, <clears throat> we're Warsaw based, we've got a team of about 200 people, so the scale is growing. Quick advertisement for me is that we're um, expanding rapidly and looking for a country manager in Hungary. So if you or somebody else is a uh, Hungarian native and wants to sort of build that local market for us, um, grab me after the, uh, the session. Okay, uh, my name is Anton. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Russia, but I've been living all my life in Bulgaria, so I'm kind of local. Uh, I have uh, two successful exits uh, behind me. First being probably nine years ago, before the word uh, startup became popular, uh, <laughs> I sold a hosting company to NetInfo, which was led by, by Luben Bell, who is here with us and is one of the pillars of the Bulgarian startup, startup community. So I like to think that I was in the beginning of the startup community, even though it wasn't there yet. Currently, uh, I'm CTO of a project uh, called P Cloud. Uh, it's a storage, cloud storage uh, <coughs> service. Uh, we are uh, we launched a year and a half ago. We are approaching two million users, uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, build a better product because. Uh, what we saw two years ago when we started on the market wasn't enough, and we, since then we are building a better cloud storage than others. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Tenko. Uh, I am managing partner of SiteGround. Uh, probably a lot of you haven't heard about SiteGround. SiteGround is one of the biggest IT companies in Bulgaria. Uh, it's also one of the biggest uh, <coughs> privately owned shared hosting companies in the world. Uh, with more than 50% of its customer base in the U.S. Uh, we have uh, more than 230 employees, and we have six offices, out of which the latest one is in Madrid. And uh, we're proud to be Bulgarian, and we are proud to represent Bulgaria in the tech community in the world. And uh, we are also proud to be one of the most innovative uh, hosting companies out there. I'm also co-founder and uh, CEO of Cube. Cube is a container-based cloud hosting company which competes with Amazon and Google and your likes, and uh, that's pretty much it. My name is Ivailo. I'm Bulgarian. I'm physicist by education uh, and serial serial entrepreneur by practice. Uh, I started Extrapack, which is a company for plastic bags, many years ago. Then I started Voltopia, and then together with Peter, we started. Auction eyes. 
Um, the, the first two companies are very good companies, brilliant. Extra Pack is one of the best in Europe. Voltopia is the best in the world in this in its segment. Uh, and that's why we earn a lot of money and we have very good life. <laughs> uh, and uh, and Pesho is even better than me in his job. Uh, and that's why we decided to start something bigger than uh, what we have done so far. And we started Auction Ice with the idea to change the way people buy things. Uh, uh, this is a really big idea. We'll see what will happen. All right, so uh, obviously I'm Peter. I'm here, uh, I'm a Bulgarian local coming from Sofia. And I'm a co-founder of a company called Chaos Group. We founded about 15 years ago. Uh, and, uh, we are successful in developing one of the leading, or should I say the number one rendering, high-end rendering engine in the world. We are very, very famous amongst the visual designers, the industrial designers, car manufacturers, architects. And recently we've been very famous in the VFX industry as well. In certain segments across the globe, we own over 90% of the worldwide market, and we are a Bulgarian company based here in Sofia. Currently, we have about 160 employees worldwide. We are probably the only, one of the only Bulgarian companies that have invested in two American companies. We bought an American business uh, four years ago, and recently we invested another $2 million in a new startup in the US. And we are probably the only Bulgarian company outsourcing development work to the US, and we're hiring <laughs> developers in the United States. <laughs> And recently, as Ivalo mentioned, we have uh, founded a new startup called Auction Ice, which will revolutionize the way people buy things on the internet. Great. Well, this is fantastic. It's a very, as I suspected, there's a very diverse group in terms of what you're doing, how you got there. So the name of this panel is How We Did It. So starting down at the end, I just want to ask then, going back to the beginning, you know, what made you think that you could create this kind of company here? And what was the main obstacle, I guess, that you were facing when you had the idea and you thought, we want to we wanna start this here in Bulgaria? Well, first of all, we never thought of it to be a global company. We never thought about the scale we would be working with today. Uh, our main idea was to develop the best product. That's what we were focused on. Uh, we never started the business with the idea that we will be a worldwide leader. It, it kind of becomes natural at one moment that we are the leader because we produce the best product, and that's, what, that's where our focus was. And when we started, there were literally two of us, literally coming out of Studensky Grad. I'm sure you all know that. Mm -hmm. What that it means, it means a lot of parties, a lot of young kids, and a lot of uh, IT guys walking around. <laughs> And that's, that's what motivated us, was with, with the group of people we, we studied with and the kind of products we wanted to build is just what motivated us. We never thought of it to be a global company in the beginning. Yeah. And coming from plastic bags, which is fantastic. I mean, what made you think... Is it really fantastic? People hate plastic bags. <laughs> <laughs> One word, plastic. M maybe most of you hate them, but uh, you prefer paper bags, which is completely wrong, but okay. But so, so you, ha you mentioned you, know, you had the money to start another venture, yeah. but what made you think you could move into some sort of tech-related uh, industry that you would have the kind of background or the, I guess, the mentality to, to... This was my passion that time. It's still part of my passion now. I, I was a climber, and that's why I decided to make climbing walls. Well, Top is doing climbing walls mainly. Uh, so it's a simple story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, neither, uh, uh, I didn't... Uh, we didn't start at this company. I have a partner there. Uh, we didn't start at the company in order to be the biggest player in the world. We started to make fun. We started to make good products. This is because of passion uh, that we have about the product. Uh, of course, since the beginning, we knew that we are better than everyone in the world. But uh, <laughs> this is, yes, uh, but this is common uh, with the nerds. Uh, you know, the nerds. No. The, the, you, Big part of you are nerds here. Uh, <laughs> and the, the nerds, they know that they are very great. Just the world doesn't know about it. Uh, and we, we had the same, the, the, this feeling in the beginning, and we proved it. And a lot of modesty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tenko, what about you? Uh, at the beginning, we didn't, we didn't know where we were 
as great as we are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to be modest. You had to discover too. that you yeah. were brilliant. Uh, no, we discovered it the hard way. Uh, we uh, started going to events internationally maybe seven years ago. And uh, with a surprise, we discovered that people know us and that people like us. And the more we went to events internationally, we discovered how much more people like us than the competition. And uh, sooner than later, we discovered that we're doing great things and that we should just continue doing what we are. And Bulgaria is helping us with that because we have some great talent here, especially tech talent. And uh, that is like, wor uh, people worldwide talk about Bulgarian talent. Uh, we're not very good at uh, business people, like we don't have many of those, but uh, in, ter in terms of tech talent, there are a lot of them here and uh, that helps a lot because we can, we can build things and we are building things that nobody else in our space is doing. And uh, it's pretty helpful. It's pretty helpful that we have all those incub incubators here, like Launch Hub, for example, who help the, the ecosystem grow and uh, help those talent develop. OK, I kind of forgot the question, but I guess it was about. Well, so how, how did you get here? I mean, what made you think, being here in Sofia, that you could create a company here, that you could grow it here? Um, I never developed a company anywhere else, so that's the only way I know how things work. So, uh, but uh, I would say that it's a great place to start business. It's a great place to find partners. Uh, I would agree with uh, people before me that uh, uh, in my history uh, I managed to do uh, to success uh, in business just by building a great product. And that is something that is totally doable in Sofia. And I know you didn't start the company, but now yeah. that you're yeah. there. So, so the beginnings were a bit opportunistic. I can't take credit for it, but it was um, um, one of our uh, founders, the, the, the first guy in, um, actually moved cities from, from a small town into Warsaw. I couldn't find a doctor, kind of a similar kind of story like ZocDoc in the US. And I uh, was frustrated by the lack of sort of information and sort of credible opinions available on the internet. And so there's a real need to build this sort of one consolidated big marketplace in a given market. Um, and he found sort of websites that were trying to do it, but the owners were basically doing it as a hobby. And so he bought one of them out. It had about a few hundred thousand unique users at the time. Um, Marius is a, is a uh, SEO type guru, and he's uh, sort of revamped the links, revamped the site, cleaned up from, uh, cleaned the site from advertisements. And the traffic really grew very quickly. Organic traffic grew from like 200,000 to like 2 million in, in the first year. And so we said, hey, can we do this in other markets? And we started looking for similar domains that were being mismanaged and that weren't uh, getting enough focus, attention, that were sort of owners weren't understanding sort of SEO structures and sort of what drives uh, good search results. And we bought the, a similar kind of platform in, in the Czech Republic. Um, in other markets now, we're going in organically or through that acquisition uh, model as well. So it was kind of insight into what was missing in the market plus sort of an opportunity at the time to find a domain that was for sale available and had some sort of uh, history uh, that we could sort of improve. Okay, so now I'm 33, but back when I was 18, I started studying economics in Buenos Aires in a free university. And then I started working for an economist consultancy group. Then I do my career in finance. Uh, managing $1 billion, I was very happy, but I was, was like managing risk and not creating nothing from scratch. So at 25, I say, okay, let's move on with uh, entrepreneurship and technology. I met my co-founder, he's a hacker by definition. We were having dinner with more friends and he appeared with a t-shirt with Firefox logo, <laughs> all the hair like this. Okay, let's talk with this guy. And he told me a story that he was finding a house at that time, like 10 years ago, the internet, the websites for finding a house online were very bad. Basically, the newspaper copied the text into the newspaper website. So this guy, Martin, my co-founder, created a small uh, program that copied all these texts from different websites and created a spreadsheet in Excel. And in that way, he found his house. And this was like 10 years ago. So OK, let's try to do this in a in a better way. So we found a, 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 another company called Sumavisos. We, we basically we scrap every website, every portal in the world in 30 countries, 12 languages. Uh, we have a very small office in his uh, house, in his garage. We were four people making 
ton of money with Google AdSense, and we were having fun. But then Google wanted to change everything, so we start seeing that we need to build a different type of company. And that's why three years ago, we started with Properati to create our own portal for real estate, because we saw that was a, an opportunity in, in Latin America, especially in mobile, because these newspaper websites being evolved, and the mobile experience was very bad. So we start again from zero, and we build this company. Now we have 40 employees. We raised $2 million last year. This year, we're going to raise five more. Uh, we are growing in sales. Everything is doing very well. But I'm thinking that we are from like day one. So we need a lot of things to do. And, and I think we, we just started. So um, one thing I want to throw out there for discussion is a conversation I've had just uh, several times in the couple of days I've been here, which is around this question of whether it's better to be focused on building a lot of local tech hubs, smaller tech hubs in a place like Sofia or where I'm from, Toulouse, or somewhere in Spain, or whether it, people in Europe should be focused on building a few major hubs like Berlin, London, Paris. You know, sh is it better for you all to be where you are, or should you move to Paris or Berlin? Should you move to Silicon Valley? I certainly know coming from <laughs> Silicon Valley originally, every venture capitalist, the second thing they'll ask you is, can you move your company to Silicon Valley? So I'm wondering if, if at any point any of you were faced with that decision and how you, now that you're down the road with your company, how you feel about the decision to remain not in one of the major tech hubs, but to stay where you are and build your company. Anyone want to start? Sure, I can start. I mean, we've, um, like I said, we just finished a financing round, so we faced the issue of, um, the issue that was sort of raised before, that uh, during big, doing big Series B, Series rounds for C companies is super difficult. It's difficult to attract U.S. investors who claim they're interested, who claim they understand the market, who claim they, um, will invest in anything as long as it's a cool idea, but in the end, um, don't understand the difference between Warsaw and Prague, right? Um, so they passed, and basically the question was for us, do we need to move, uh, like a few other sort of Polish-based companies have done? Um, and we decided that for now, we're gonna stay put, we're gonna sort of, um, because we've got local, good talented engineering talent, plus this is where our client base is, um, for us it makes sense to stay, and really look for, um, really look for uh, selectively for the right investors who understand the market. And so um, one example is the EBRD, the venture capital program, which came in the last round, uh, focused on Turkey, focused on Russia, focused on smaller CD markets. They get the market, and so it was a good sort of fit. So I think it's, it's, it's better not to necessarily adapt for what the investors want, but just find the right investors. Yeah. And what about the rest of you? I mean, were any of you- So if you, if you have a company and if you have a product and uh, probably you have been like funded locally. And uh, if, if your target audience is in Palo Alto or in California, then it might make sense to move. But uh, if it's not, and, uh, or if you don't need to see them on a daily basis, and what's the reason to move? Like we, we have more than 200,000 customers from the US and we're here. So it depends. Like there are pluses and minuses, and I, I get this on like weekly basis. I get asked by people, uh, are you planning on coming to live in the US because you have a lot of business here and because it might be better for you? Right now I don't. I might be someday in the future. But. And what about you guys? I mean, you've built big companies. I mean, is, it, is there pressure? Or do you feel like you're above that now to just make your own decision? Uh, we work in 50 countries now but I still enjoy living in Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a good place to manufacture, to make business, not to sell, but to produce. Bulgaria is a really good place. Easy, low taxes, beautiful girls, nice climate. Careful. <laughs> uh, yeah, four seasons, good place for living. And the world is more and more global now. I, I really don't think, and I don't feel the push to go to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm quite comfortable here. Yeah, now, when you do go out beyond your, your home market then, though, do you still, I mean, you're mentioning, you know, people are still asking you. And we when have you offices oh, uh, in the States, Canada, Western Europe, uh, Eastern Asia, but, but the headquarters is still, still here. Yeah. There is enough talent here for yeah. the headquarters. Now, have you found any drawbacks then to, to not moving? I mean, are there still things that, 
uh, in terms of building the local community or, or finding talent? Um, or are you finding that those things are plentiful wherever you've, you've decided to locate, like in Argentina? So yes, um, for example, I, I think it depends. I'm an economist, so I'll, I'll answer, it depends. <laughs> uh, so basically, I think, for example, in our case, we have our headquarters in Buenos Aires, basically because we live there. <laughs> and there's great talent, and then we have a uh, sales office in Sao Paulo, in Santiago, Chile, we are opening Mexico, Colombia. Uh, so we, we have the factory in, in where we live, and then we have sales offices around uh, where we have the market. Uh, I went to, to Silicon Valley to raise money like two years ago. Um, basically, people there is uh, asking me, okay, are you a billion dollar company, yes or no? Okay, should, uh, I think yes, but no, I, I only want to see a company that's gonna be one billion in three years, they're looking for the next Facebook, the next Twitter, um, and basically there's too much competition about that. So if you are, you know, you have a product, you have a market, um, money is all around the world right now. There is no problem with the money. So I think, as Peter Thiel says, uh, competition is for losers. If you go to Silicon Valley, it's too much competition, and monopoly is, is for winners. If you can create your own monopoly, your own product, your own business, where you live, where you know how to do it, and then you can scale global depending on what you do. And it, yeah, sure. I will agree with all uh, Bulgarian friends here that uh, mm, I, I don't feel uh, need to move in any way. And uh, so to answer your question, I would prefer if Sofia becomes a big hub and it's going there. Uh, so uh, mm, uh, moving to the States, mm, I mean, personally, I want it. I don't want it. So it's... Yes, well, there's, there's drawbacks everywhere, you know, that's the thing. The people, when they live here, they are focused on the local problems. And yes, we definitely have a lot of problems here. However, when you go to other places and you listen to other people complaining about their own local reality, you realize that there are problems that we have never heard of here that are a fact there. And uh, we, often, um, we often neglect the fact that Bulgaria is a good place to, to do business in many different ways, and we can definitely do a lot of uh, production here and export, and that's the cool thing about the world now is that uh, everything is online, everything is global, and uh, if you want to learn something about an event in uh, Tokyo in Japan, all you need to do is just open your browser. You don't have to fly there anymore, and it's a lot more convenient to stay in a place that you're familiar with, where you can build your business, where you can build your teams, you can have people you can trust, rather than being a new foreigner that has come to uh, Palo Alto or whatever, and in our case, our business is global. We cannot move to any specific area to get a, an advantage over the, um, over the other businesses. 20% of our business is US, the rest <coughs> is the whole world. As I said, in certain areas, we own over 80 or 90% of the market, which means that we need to ask ourselves the question, do we move to uh, London, do we move to the US, do we move to Japan? China is now becoming a huge market for everyone. And uh, speaking about drawbacks, none of us knows uh, the problems across the global problems, but we know our local problems. We know how to deal with them, and uh, that what, that's the advantage of being where you are, is that you know how to deal with your local reality. If you move to London, you don't know about the problems that are going on there. If you move to the US, there are different problems there. And obviously it makes sense to have local offices for many different reasons, and as Ivalo said, we also have offices across the globe, but Building a business anywhere else would be, could become a lot bigger challenge than you think. There's drawbacks everywhere. Bulgarians stay here. <laughs> <laughs> but it also doesn't sound like, in, in your case, that in terms of acquiring companies either, that, that, I mean, did you have a hard time selling people on that idea that here comes this company from Bulgaria that wants to acquire you? I mean. Well, it was kind of a natural fit because uh, the guys that we acquired, they were using our technology in the wrong way. And, uh, <laughs> in the wrong way? In the wrong way. And, and that's, that's, that's the way we saw it. And uh, we thought that we should uh, take over their business and make sure that our technology is used in the right way so that customers are happy. And uh, obviously, especially when you're talking about high-tech uh, uh, things, especially in, in the uh, visual world, everybody thinks about the US, Japan, Germany being the global leaders. And I'm sorry to say that, but the Germany, German company got acquired because of us. An American company went bankrupt because of us. There are a bunch of Japanese dudes that never saw the, the, day, the light of day because of us. And uh, 
after a few years of this going on globally, people realized that, yes, there's people from Bulgaria who can do business, who can do production, and who can do the right, uh, produce the right software that can actually beat anything else across the globe. And once they realized that, once they accepted it, then it was a much easier sell to tell them, hey, we're Bulgarians, so they're okay, that's you guys then, okay, we know you. So yes, it was tough in the beginning, but not anymore. But you feel like that bias is sort of sliding away. There was a huge bias. Nobody, nobody believed in us in the beginning, and people were buying our competitor software just because it was German or American or whatever. Did that any of you? Did, did any the same with us. The same with us. Yeah. It was really, really hard in the beginning because of the bad image of Bulgarians mm -hmm. around the Europe mainly, but it's not like this anymore. Yeah. We used to have this U.S. senator that uh, hosted with us his website, and his motto was. I don't know if I remember it correctly, but it was like, buy American or buy by America. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and as soon as the press realized that he's hosting with us, uh, he, he got a big backlash. Who is this? Because I don't remember the name of the senator, but I mean, we, we, the, the reason I'm telling you this is because we're doing such a great job of pretending, we're not trying to pretend, but pretending to be American that people consider us an, as an American company up until the time they go to our About Us page and see we're Bulgarian. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we don't try to be American. Uh, we try to do what we do better than the others. And just succeeding doing that uh, makes people believe you and it doesn't really matter in the end which country are you from. Yeah, been it's been interesting to see from where I came from, increasingly you often don't know where these things are coming from. Like my wife, uh, became a huge Prezi fan for presentations she had to give. And then she was recently going to Budapest, and I said, oh, well, you should go look these guys up. And she said, why? And I is said... Prezi, is Prezi Hungarian? Hungarian? Yeah. I thought it's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> this is, it's well done. <laughs> well, of course, everybody in the U.S. assumes it's U.S. company because everyone's uh, using it over there now. Uh -huh. and, uh, but, yeah, but to that point, I mean, people increasingly you're not looking at the fine print to see like well, where's the service coming from where's it being hosted you know where's where are the headquarters of this company uh, even with Spotify it, I mean we sort of know where they are but if you look at their website it's very hard to look at it and see where is this company actually based or where are their headquarters as soon um, as the website opens fast enough yes yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> um, our clock is off up here so I don't know uh, how much how we're doing on time uh, or if anyone wants to ask a few questions, but I will uh, keep going down the line and someone can give me a signal if we're getting close or we'll just keep gabbing for several more hours until it's time for cocktails. <laughs> okay, Do you want so, the audience or? yeah, does anyone have a question for these guys? Uh, we had a couple hands up. Um, if someone wants to either shout or run a microphone over to someone very quickly. Are you that bored? <laughs> <laughs> or we could just wrap up because we're what, like an hour behind now? I, I have think, a question. So. <laughs> okay, one question and then we're going to wrap. I have okay. a question. Okay, in the back. Okay. My name is Tatiana Puncheva and I want to know the stupidest thing you ever did when you, in whatever, I mean, all the companies you started. So tell us what that is so that nobody else repeats it. I can immediately tell you. Never go to your biggest potential customer unprepared because that's what we did. <laughs> and we had a few huge failure and our software requires very, just to give you a short kind of background, our software requires a lot of computing power. So big PCs, big, big systems that really require a lot of uh, computing power. And giving uh, a presentation, speaking about the fact that your software is the fastest on the slowest laptop you can buy in a store <laughs> is never a good idea, especially if you're going to a company that is, I can't really use a lot of names here, but think about the first three biggest studios in the world, it's one of them. <laughs> never do that, always go prepared, especially if your customer is big because they know they're big, they have huge expectations. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> Anyone else very quickly? Uh, big mistake? I, I, I can probably prepare a list of the most <laughs> stupid things I've done, but uh, the, the one that is probably leading my, my list would be I, I, 
One time I did shut down the power of our whole building uh, by putting a scissors into the power outlet. <laughs> and uh, we, we, probably an office of 80 people didn't work for like eight hours because of me. And this is probably the most stupid thing that I've done in my life. Excellent. Well, let's end on that note, I think. Cool. Uh, and these guys will be around if you want to talk to them more. But thank you very much for coming and thank you for your time.